Okay, so hi everyone. Welcome to Moments of Grace. Uh, and this is, uh, the podcast that we have is called Growing in Grace. And, uh, yes, I did come running up the stairs there for a moment. So I'm a little bit out of breath. But anyway, um, we have been running, uh, this podcast for a while now. Um, and, uh, we are on a series called The Fruit of the spirits. And so we are actually doing today, we'll be handling goodness and so many, uh, wonderful things that we have to say on goodness because they're just the attributes of God. They're who he is. He's such a loving God. When we get done with this series, you get to know all of the different, um, little aspects of God, but all of them really boil, uh, to one thing, which is love. And so, they just, it's just who he is. It's not what he does. And so you start getting, once you, you're going to hear, hear us say that very often, um, that all of these attributes are, are who he is, who make up who he is. And, um, his ultimate, of course, demonstration is what he did on the cross. But these, all of these parts of the fruits of the spirit, we do have them. Um, just to start off with. So we are in goodness today. We've covered a few other ones. Um, we've covered, uh, peace, right? Joy, love, patience, and kindness. So now we're up to goodness. And it is amazing. These are always put a smile on my face because again, they're who he is. So I'm going to introduce you to my son here. His name is Matthew Ballard. He has his channel FM rules. I, I normally go ahead and post him everywhere. Uh, so you might have heard him, uh, pray very powerful, uh, prayer warrior. We, uh, I have here. I'm very proud of him. I'm going to go ahead and link his channel in the title and down below in the description box and so with my channels my main channel is the grace life diy home decor but i quickly want to make moments of grace my main channel because god's in charge of that one but for but right now we have uh the grace life diy home decor which is this one up here then this one over here is called simply grace lifestyle and that one is really just an overflow of the first one the uh, Simply Grace is more home life, okay? And then we have Moments of Grace where you have my whole journey with school. You have my journey with the um, missions trip. That was really awesome trip, even though I went kicking and screaming on that trip. I absolutely was totally blessed on that trip. And uh, then, of course, graduation and now continuing further education. So he is also a Bible college student. So we're really proud to be continuing this new uh, chapter in both our lives. Uh, over in a new location, you know. Um, so with that being said, he's going to start out telling you what goodness is. Because remember, it's not, these are all parts of his nature. And I just love them all, really. They're all overflowing from the heart, which means they're all overflowing from him. They're parts of him. So. Amen, amen. So the definition of goodness is the quality of being morally upright, mm. virtuous, and benevolent. Okay, to further explain what that means, it involves having a genuinely good and noble character, doing what is right, and having a positive impact on other people and on other people's lives. Now, here are some characteristics of goodness. Okay, to further, you know, explain it. Goodness is reflected through acts of kindness, integrity, generosity, and righteousness. It is doing good for others without expecting anything in return. Now, here are different ways that you can demonstrate goodness. Okay, goodness can be shown through actions such as helping the less fortunate being honest in all situations and treating others with respect and fairness and consistently making moral choices. Mm -hmm. Okay. Obviously all the fruit boils down to God. That's who he is. And that's why we get the term God is good all the time. 
all the time God is good because he is. God is, God has integrity. Okay. That's who he is. Yeah. He is virtuous. And he literally set the moral standard. So, of course, he's morally upright. Okay. So, now we're going to talk about what goodness is not. Okay. And this is, I always like to do the comparisons between the two because it's good to know what it is and then what it isn't. Right. Can I say one thing before? Absolutely. Okay. So, um, before he tells you what goodness is not, it's it's really important that we understand, right, that we have, if you're a believer and you've received the Lord as Savior, then you have all of those uh, fruits of the Spirit in you. You have, you have Christ living in you. So you have all of the fruits. Now, should we be feeling bad because we operate better at some and not others? No. Right? Um, so we be feeling, um, the, the reason why I'm, I'm bringing this up right now, right before he gets into what goodness is not. Okay. We have all of the fruits of the spirit. Jesus did not operate, right? Mm-hmm. And all of the fruits all at once. He operated in the fruits as needed. Okay. As whatever situation call, right? Now it's the same thing with us. And now sometimes if I know, we, if I know you or you know me or somebody else, you could see people that are naturally operating in a fruit more than others. And then that I need to work at what that person, right? So if I am more of a peaceful person, then of course, if my, and, and my son isn't, then he would have to work more at being more peaceful. And I would have to be working more in the fruit that I'm not, I'm not, you know, that needs work. So we shouldn't feel, um, what I'm trying to say here is you should not feel uh, bad that you're not operating in in all of the fruits perfectly, because you'll never operate in all of the fruits perfectly. Um, But the fruits that you know need a little bit more work, I, I, I suggest more exercising those muscles a little bit more in that area. I'm exercising those fruits more in that area. So if I need to be more compassionate, then that's what I want to practice. So if I need uh, to be more joyful, um, I want to practice more being joyful. Um, always in the ones, because some of, so each of us naturally will be more of some than others. So before we get into this, because the reason why I won't mention that is not so you could feel bad over what goodness is not. So you don't say, oh my goodness, I did so and so and I, I did that wrong or I did that. There's no such thing. Um, there is a such thing as right and wrong, but we can correct it. So there's no reason to feel bad is what I'm saying, because I don't operate in all of the fruits properly. Um, I know I, I know I need practice in some. And so with that being said, God is with you to walk you through to practice that as you develop your relationship with him, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So goodness is not, okay, just being nice or superficially pleasing, mm-hmm. okay? While niceness focuses on external behavior, goodness focuses on a genuine desire to do what is right and is beneficial for others and oneself. Okay, so bas- so here are some false concepts of what goodness is. Okay, false goodness can involve self-righteousness, hypocrisy, and performing acts of kindness with strings attached. Motives. So the wrong motives. Okay. Jesus mentioned the Pharisees a lot. He talked about the Pharisees primarily in Matthew 23, I believe. That whole chapter, Jesus is just, Mm -hmm. he's just going crazy, it seems, like on the Pharisees. He's really, you know, telling them off because of, you know, call them whitewashed tombs. Mm-hmm. You know, on the out on the outside, they're beautiful. They look the part, but inwardly, inwardly, they're full of dead men's bones. And um, you know, I also want to mention the story about how we can often perceive people outwardly 
as wow, you know, they must be like a good person. They look like a good person. They they and obviously they may even de- display a lot of the other fruits. They look, you know, kind. They look like they have peace. But, you know, we're not to rely on just our senses. We're also to rely on discernment, which is spiritual, an inward knowing. And God sees us in the spirit. You know, when the prophet Samuel was anointing the next king of Israel after King Saul fell from grace, you know, he kind of just like disobeyed the Lord and lost his mind, if you know the story. Well, needless to say, God told him to go to the house of Jesse and to anoint one of the sons of Jesse as king over Israel. And Samuel judged, or rather, looked at the situation only with his eyes. And he saw the seven sons of Jesse, and he thought, well, surely this, you know, they were tall and they looked apart. And, he, you know, he was saying how, you know, surely this must be the next king of Israel. And he went down the line of all the sons, and the Lord kept saying, nope, 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 until they ran out of sons to look at. And then he went to the father. He's like, do you have any more sons? Cause none of these are the next king of Israel, which even Jesse forgot where David was. And he was basically like, yeah, well that shepherd boy over there, you know, that's the only other kid I could think of. So basically that's when the Lord told Samuel that the Lord doesn't look as man looks. The Lord will look at your outward appearance. Whereas the Lord looks at the heart. So that's a common theme in general, just within walking with Jesus, is that you're going to change internally, you know, not just your outward appearance. You know, you can look, obviously, you know, you're going to look better, you're going to be more clean, I'm sure, if you follow Christ and you're a follower of Jesus and you have a relationship with him because that's just the nature of God is he cleans you inside and out. He sanctifies you. That's what sanctification means. The sancti- it's to sanctify. It's to cleanse you and to set you apart from everyone else. And so, you know, I think that's also interesting to know. And I also think that it's important to distinguish what is and what is not, you know, goodness. And so... Yeah. So here are some Bible verses, Bible verses explaining goodness. Okay. Now there are numerous Bible verses that emphasize the importance of goodness. But what I will say is that these are very important. Okay. So primarily I want to talk about Micah 6 verse 8. So, Micah chapter 6, verse 8. My mom is actually looking that up on her phone right now. And uh, it says, let's see. I ain't editing this, by the way. So, I want you all to know this. No fancy editing anymore. I'm going to go to the King James Version. And so it says, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. So God shows us what is good. Okay. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Mm -hmm. So literally... God shows us in our relationship with him what is good. Obviously, he's going to reveal more of himself to what is good. You know, more of himself so that you know what is good. Now we're going to go to Romans 12. To Romans 12, 9. Romans 12.9. Where do you want? What translation? The New King James? Yeah, let's go to the New King James for this one. 
Personally, I like the King James and the New King James. Uh, I'm kind of a traditionalist. Thank you very much. But it says, Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil and cling to what is good. So, see again, it's all connected to love. Mm -hmm. And, you know. Go to the next one. Yep. So we're going to go to Galatians chapter six. We're going to just, you know, fastly go through these just so we can get to how we can bear more fruit. So Galatians six verses nine and ten. Should read that out of the NIV. Yeah, let's try it out of the NIV. This way we're not in the same translation. So this one's out of the NIV. So the NIV says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity... Let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Paul is saying you could get weary in doing good. It's very possible to, you know, have that fruit and to bear, you know, to bear fruit of goodness. But after a certain point, you could become weary in it because you could, you know, Obviously, when we sow, we don't automatically see the fruits of our labor. Mm -hmm. So you may be sowing goodness. You may be, you know, and that's not, everything we do is sowing and reaping. That's one of the natural laws of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So when we're sowing and sowing good and sowing good and sowing good, and it, it, there's no, it seems like there's no fruit of it. It could, you could, it, it could wear you out. We actually did one of our first podcast. The second podcast we ever did was you know, how to not grow weary. Now, one of the things, I mean, you, you, you will go through different things in your life that you're going to feel like that. And we just happen to be talking about this. You, you, um, the first thing that God, you know, said in that Genesis, you know, that seed time and harvest time will always remain. Mm -hmm. So the, we, we, we do have to get into the habit of clinging on to scripture. Because scripture is God talking. Okay. And if God is talking, he means what he says. He says what he means. He will not alter anything that he has said. His word never returns void. Multiple places all over the Bible. Titus 1, 2, if you want to stick with the new, says God cannot lie. So uh, if you go to the Bible and you find a scripture that is speaking to you in that area, then hang on to it because you can grow weary. I can't, you keep doing the right thing and doing the right thing and doing the right thing and you, and regardless of whether people are receiving that or not receiving that or you're not seeing the outcome, how you want to see it, whatever the scenario could be, um, you're holding on to the scripture, you know that God is true and he doesn't lie and I'm holding on to this regardless of how I'm feeling and he does not want you to feel weary in this. He does not want you to get to the point of feeling weary. And of course, that can even go even further than that because we get so tired of doing the right thing. When are we going to see something good? You can, it's, it, you can, it's guaranteed. God's word is guaranteed. You will keep doing the right thing and keep doing the right thing and keep doing the right thing. You will see a perfect result. You will because he cannot change. When you see it, um, can, cause that but you will see it and so the hope is that you will see it but sometimes we feel in the flesh it's not happening fast enough i want it now see we go back to i want it now but the thing is is that seed time and harvest time will always remain you keep planting those good seeds and you will see you will see a positive result you will see um that come to pass and then paul the apostle paul um is a perfect example of growing weary in many different areas, right? Many different areas, but in that particular area he was talking about. But you do keep doing good and you will see good. 
Okay, so you never give up on that. So finally, we want to know, how can believers bear more fruit in goodness? Okay, this is going to be a short little little cake podcast. Uh, so how can believers, you know, bear more fruit in goodness? Now, here are some examples, okay, that we could actually practice goodness. Okay, we can practice goodness by consistently making moral choices. Okay. You could choose to do good. You could just choose to just do it. You know? Treating others with kindness and respect. See, all the fruits are related in one fa- form or fashion. And so if you fall short in one, but if you know you have a strength in another, you can actually use that other strength that you have in order to impact the one that you lack in while you're developing it while you're developing that you know while you're building that muscle so you can treat others with kindness and respect and you can live with integrity Mm -hmm. right and you can actively seek opportunities to help and bless others Mm -hmm. okay now Let's talk about the importance of practicing goodness in daily life. Okay, you could demonstrate goodness, or rather just demonstrating goodness, allows us to positively impact our surroundings. Okay, contributing to a better society and reflect the character of Christ. That kind of explains itself, honestly. I mean, we could practically, you know or rather practical ways to cultivate goodness, right, would be cultivating goodness involves cultivating a righteous heart through prayer, studying God's word, and seeking guidance of the Holy Spirit, and intentionally choosing to do what is right in every situation. That's how you could bear more. And that's ultimately the answer to all the fruits. But primarily for goodness especially, you got to pray, pray, pray. Pray without ceasing. Jesus said, we should always be praying in every situation. Okay? Study the Word of God. What does God have to say about it? Because God, if God is the ultimate authority on what is and what isn't good then you would be, it would be in our best interest to actually look at what he says. And seeking the guidance of the Holy Spirit. That's what the Holy Spirit is for. The Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. He's our comforter. He's our counselor. You know, all of these things is the name of the Holy Spirit, and that's why we seek him. Well, we seek his guidance and his counsel. And... If you have the Holy Spirit, he's going to talk to you. And he's going to tell you what to do, when to do it. And you have to listen to it and don't disobey him. Just simple obedience will help you along a lot in this journey. And when you know what is right and what is not right, then it's just a matter of choosing that. And as you start making that decision to choose what is right, Mm -hmm. then ultimately, you know... You're going to form that habit. Mm -hmm. And habits, you become that eventually. Right. So. So one of the things, why do you keep looking over there? I feel like, is that a mouse or something? Like. No. I'm sorry. We have the slider open, and it's uh, and it sounds like maybe a little chirping bird or something. Um, I didn't see anything fly in here. I think it's just the sound from outside. Because I kept noticing him looking that way, but no. See, the birds are right above. They build a nest above the. Bu- <laughs> so what I wanted to say is. 
Well, that's okay. I mean, we have the slider open. There's birds chirping. This is nature. This is what's called real life. So um, that part, he's choosing not to edit it out. And it's just life. You know what I mean? We just, I I heard it too. I heard, I heard it too. And right outside, we already know where they built their nest. And one time we did have a bird fly in the house. Wouldn't that been a good video, right? I mean, we took, it took us a while to get it out of the house too. And, um, but anyway, um, going back to God, see, we serve a moral God. We have to do what's right because it's the right thing to do. We have to do what's right even when no one's looking. You see, I, and I'm never going to get tired of repeating these things because this is very, very important. Had God compromised in any one of those spirits, or first of all, the fruits of the spirit is, is, uh, th- those are his attributes. Th- this is, this is who he is. He doesn't know how to operate outside of these because that's part of him. It's who he is. Now, the goodness of God, you know, sometimes we're not good. I mean, sometimes we're not good or a lot of the times we're not good if you want to get real about it. But you you got to take a look at yourself. I mean, when I can tell you this, I mean, maybe a small example would be this. Let's say I was not a good person before I had my kids. It's amazing how your whole life changes when you have kids. And then all of a sudden you try to do things right because you want to set a good example. At least some of us try to set a good example for what is right. Doesn't mean that your life is going to turn out good. Listen, your life apart from God I don't know what to say um, because I know that God reigns on the just and unjust. We can't always explain things, but I'll tell you what. If God would have compromised in any kind of a way, we would not be here today. He is a moral God, whether you believe that or not, whether anybody believes that or not. He's a moral God. That's who we serve is a moral God. We need to do what's right because it's the right thing to do. Not because I think I can get away with it. It's just a small white lie. Listen, God never lied. Had he compromised once in anything, we wouldn't be here. We just wouldn't. So when we think of the goodness of God, of the joy of God, of the love of God, oh my goodness, the ultimate sacrifice was done because he loved you. But the one thing we need to remember is that he created you for him. Why do we have such a hard time accepting the fact that he's a moral God and he's all of these things and that we have to now struggle to be good to somebody, struggle to be nice to somebody. I mean, if you're naturally not a person that's nice to somebody, why? You know, a lot of the times we just don't, listen, this is how he is no matter what. This is who he is and who we serve. We represent him. We're representatives of Jesus Christ. And we sit here and talk to you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And whether people believe um, that there's a God or this used to be or that believe, I'm going to tell you, listen, there is a God whether, whether we believe there's a God or not. He doesn't stop operating or moving because you think he doesn't exist. He doesn't. He is good. He is good. Every day I can find something that he is good. You are walking today. You can see today. You can talk and hear. There's people who can't. You have a home. You have a roof over your head. You have children that are that are healthy. And even with a lot of the things we go through, right, we are blessed And he is good in every circumstance and situation. We're so busy locking him out of stuff that we don't realize, well, why did he this? Why did he that? The question should be, why did you shut him out? Why are you not having a relationship with him? And I'm taking it there because we get a lot of questions about, I get a lot of questions about, well, why this and why that? You know, we need to take about why you have what's in you. Mm -hmm. 
We need to thank Jesus and we need to thank God that the, he sent the Holy Spirit to guide us the rest of the way in this journey because his goodness, his love, everything that we've talked about up until this point and still the other, the next uh, couple of things we need to talk about as far as the fruits is who he is. He didn't compromise for you. As a matter of fact, he confined himself to a body to die for you so that he can take you back home uh, to live with him forever. We don't have any right to question that. We don't. All you need to do is believe it, is really all you need to do. I'm going to believe that what he did for me, I didn't deserve what he did for me, but he did it for me. And when we are learning about the fruits, you should sit there in total awe because his goodness is so overflowing, it's unspeakable. You can't even speak over his goodness. And I know where he's brought me from. I know where each one of, each one of us have a testimony. If you got a testimony today, you need to speak on what Jesus, what Jesus has done for you. Amen. That you could have been caught in the depths of God knows what and not even been here. Listen, I lost a brother. Okay. Five years ago to a very unfortunate situation who could have been saved. And this is a twin brother who I was very close to. And I'm here to tell you today, God is good in the midst of everything. No matter what you're going through, you are here today for a reason. For a reason he has you here. He never compromised in his mission. And if he would have compromised one time, just take one of these things and distort one of them. He, we wouldn't be here today. And so I am very adamant about this. We're very passionate about this because he's not willing that any of us should perish, but that all would come to repentance. Another things we do is we, we, we kind of blend in with people. As Christians, we shouldn't be blending in with anybody. We should be standing for the cause of Christ. We are in the army of Christ. People need to look at us and want what we have. This is the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And there is going to, whether you believe there's a God or not, there is a God and you will see him one day. And if you don't get that reality down now, it does not stop him from doing what he's going to do. It will not. So you can go ahead and have your opinion and he will be more than happy to let you believe whatever it is that you believe because he gave you a free will and we're trying to tell you how good this God is. While sometimes we get a lot of flack about, well, why did he let this happen? And why did, why did that happen? Or why did, you know, listen, I'm not going to question what the God of the universe is, but this is fallen nature right here on this earth. There's a lot of horrible things that happened when man fell. And thank goodness he didn't give the church to man because we would have done away with it. We've already tried to pull it out of all kinds of stuff. And now look at our children today and where they're confused. They have a whole lot more things to deal with today um, that is coming ahead of them. And we need to strengthen their foundation so that we can become strong again when these horrific things are going to happen. Which, by the way, is already written in that Bible. There's not one thing that he left out of that Bible that you should know. And that's why you need to be in the Bible. Because honestly speaking, we could, we could sit here and tell you how great God is. But until you find out for yourself, okay, until you find out for yourself by reading the word of God and letting God feed you and get, letting God show you how good he is and how much he's blessed you and turned you around when we you, you didn't even have to be here today. Right? When... He has so much. Let me just, if you just, if it's not working your way, why are we so adamant not to believe that he exists? I just sometimes think about the things that he even went through here before he left. But he said it's finished. And when he said that, it's finished. And anybody who receives him, ha let me tell you, he already knows the beginning from the end of all of us. Why on earth would we not accept that he is a good God, that he is a joyful God? All of these things are overflow of who he is. We serve an awesome God no matter what's happening today because you took a breath this morning and you had a chance to say amen. And you have your family today. You have provision today. You can only do the things you do because he blessed you. There's things, there's people that don't have what you have. You know, and the, and the, we if we start getting grateful, we'll stop complaining. 
if we start getting grateful. And so we can feed all this beautiful stuff, but at the bottom line, it's either we're going to still keep giving you milk or we're still going to start giving. When, when are we going to start giving you the meat of the word so that you can understand? We can't even get to the meat of the word if you're not in the Bible. If you're not in relationship with God, you're not you're not doing anything and the only thing you're doing and listen we thank we're thankful that you're listening to us share the video with everybody even everybody who doesn't want to hear this because they need to hear this their eternal destination depends on it and so that's why i mean i'm i'm really enjoying it feels good we always want things that feel good this can be uncomfortable but in the end it's going to feel good mm-hmm. You know, the goodness of God is an amazing thing, regardless of what it is that anybody's questioning. And I am very passionate about this. As you can tell, I will say this in every single video. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything that I know. Um, and I'm going to say what I need to say out of love. Because if we didn't love you, we wouldn't say it. We get attacked before we even come on camera. This is just the truth. Can I get an Amen. Amen. Okay, we get attacked before we start, we get attacked after we start. Listen, the attacks don't stop coming because you start believing in Jesus. It's it's when you start standing for who Jesus is and what he did for us. Okay, that's what you need to do. And we don't compromise or change anything that he's done. He warns you about that in the Bible. Okay, but... He's here and he loves us and his and he he's not willing to lose any one of us. All he asks us to do is to believe and to love his people. I don't think I don't think that there's anything else that I could po- I could possibly say. But it, is it important for you to get into the word and find out for yourself? Absolutely, it is. Absolutely, it is. Somebody else cannot do your work for you. Your growth has to come from you. And so things are happening. Well, he didn't promise you wouldn't go through trials. He never said that. He said he'd go with you. But I would rather walk with him through anything than walk with, than walk by myself and not have him. You see, and that's, then that's when we get down to the meat of all of this. Your eternal destination is on you. Your relationship with God is as strong as you want it to be. And to find out the fruits, well, you know what you need to develop. Each of us know exactly what we're not good at. We know exactly what we're not good at. So why are we so like, I wonder what I need to change? Listen, you know yourself. God knows you better, but you know yourself. And you know what needs to change in you. And if you don't start turning these habits around, you know, people are only going to trust. You know, if you, if what you're saying is not agreeing with what you're doing, there's something wrong. There's something really wrong. And integrity is doing the right thing when nobody's looking. When nobody's looking. That's one of the things. And and so when we can describe God to you and his attributes and all of these things to you, he's good. He's good. No matter what is happening in my life, he is good. And that's what I'm here to tell you today. No matter what's happening in your life, he's good. If he's in your life and you are his, he's good. You know? Amen. So I think maybe prayer Yeah, you know. it's some time to pray. And this is awesome, guys. Things that needed to be said, right? Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. I praise you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to pray today? <laughs> I'll pray. I'll pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you, O God, for giving us another day of life. I thank you, Lord, that we have the Bible, uh, Father, that we can, we, we have your word in so many places across this world. We don't have it. They're not even allowed. You can get thrown in prison for it, but we have access to your word. We have access to you. You tore that veil so that we can come to you at any time, any place. It doesn't matter. All we need to do really is just yell, Jesus, or help. 
don't need to get into these fancy prayers. We don't need to get into any of these things. All we need to do is reach out to Jesus and say, I'm tired of living the way that I'm living. I need, I just want you in my life. It cannot get any worse for me. What do I have to lose? He's not willing that any should perish, but all of us would come to repentance. He loves you. He died for you. And all of the fruits of the Spirit are part of Him. And so I would want that overflow in my life. Father, show me what it is I need to strengthen. Show me what it is. Guide me in the right direction, no matter what order my steps, O Lord, according to your word. Help me to be more like you. Help me to show those fruits. Bring people into my path that I can bless, that I can, that, uh, that will be in my path in the areas that I need work in so that I would be more like you. And, and, and I know that this journey is a process until the day you come back to take me home. But all I want to do, Lord, is glorify you. And in, in my process, in my journey, I want you to say, thank you, O good and faithful servant. Amen. Hallelujah. You want to say something? That's it. <laughs> you covered it, really. In Jesus' name, because he's everything. He's just everything. Go ahead and pray for them, man. Go ahead. You just prayed. Yeah, but you know what? We can never have too much prayer, so let's do it. You know, you're right. You're right. So, Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for the work that you're doing in both of us and the work that you're about to do in both of us and and those who are with us right now. And although we're absent from the body, we are present in the spirit. And so whoever's watching this, Father, I pray that you would give them an impartation, Father, of of just whether it's the spiritual gifts or the spiritual fruits. I pray, Lord, that they would just grow in your grace and that you would give them a desire to seek you and to read your word and to just be with you, fellowship, and to just have eternal life, which is to know you and whom you sent, Jesus Christ. Father, let us grow in that and let us be the light in the world. Let us be the salt of the earth. Let us completely and only through you be transformed and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for watching, everyone. And share and comment. And don't forget to subscribe, guys. And don't forget to share this video with everybody that you know, including the ones that don't want to hear it. <laughs> because I declare them blessed right now in the name of Jesus. I'm calling them all in because they won't be able to go past this video without clicking on it, like, and even subscribing. Amen. And if Amen. you have anything to say, any prayers you need, Put them in the comments. We'll be more than happy to pray for you. In the next uh, Growing in Grace with Mom and Son, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.